Welcome to the CLB Forge podcast. This is a show to help equip you and your church for mission, ministry, and multiplying disciples. Here are your hosts, Pastor Mike Natal and Dr. Ryan Nilsson. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the CLB Forge podcast. Welcome to episode 49. We are so excited that you are here with us today, and we are moving our way up to, get this, episode 50. That's just crazy. And we have a lot of special things that we're going to tell you guys about on episode 50, but unlike Tom Holland, we are not going to give you any spoilers for what's going to happen on episode 50. However, today I want to talk about episode 49. We got some great guests, two of which, I mean, it's Ryan and I, but then the two guests that we have are two people that you've already seen. And so without really going into doing a bio for them, um, Jason Lang, who's um, here with us today, uh, he was on episode 40 with the borderless Mexico trip. Uh, And so he was here, we had a nice intro for him. Um, And then we have Nick Olson too, who's here. And both Nick and Jason work together at the same church. We were lucky enough to have Nick on. He talked a lot about Gen Z. Um, And if you'd like to listen to that episode, that's episode 29. Uh, And so I'm really encouraged by the two of them for being here with us because this is kind of like a matchup, a mashup collaboration. It's kind of as if Star Wars would match up with Star Trek, even though that would never happen because Star Trek is lame. So it maybe is more like Marvel meeting up with DC, Um, but then DC is kind of not doing a good job with their stuff. So actually, yeah, I if think, you're comparing Star Trek to DC, I don't want any part of this. Like, this yeah, well, nice. Star. I would say that Star Trek is the DC of the oh. comic book universe. So instead of mashing up with that, I'm thinking that since today, this podcast gets released on May 4th. May the 4th be with you. Therefore, the mashup made in heaven would be Star Wars meets up with Twin peaks Woo! Ooh. there we go that's good that's memory. a dream come true for nick Boy, all right that's so right there <laughs> what a, what a great mashup today that we have an awesome collaboration between us um so guys if you could just give us a really quick intro tell us uh, a little bit about the church that you birth both serve at it's cool. We really, um, we're really excited. We both get to serve uh, Word of Life Church in Lesseur, Minnesota, which is which is south of the Minneapolis metro area, right on the Minnesota River. And uh, and we've been working together. How long, Nick? How long have we been working together? Well, it'll be a year on June first. And so, and yeah. we've known each other for a lot longer than that. Yeah, we sure have. Yep. So. Yeah, we met through uh, working on the youth convention together. That's right. Actually. Yeah. So yep. we thank uh, uh, Pastor Brandon Pingman for for uh, making that connection. That was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. Uh, so I've been here for about five years. Nick's actually lived here longer than he's worked here. Um, you, you know, moved into the area. Loves loves Minnesota. I don't know anyone who loves Minnesota more than Nick does. I mean, seriously, he's he's got like a whole up north vibe to his being. I have a list on my phone of I kid you not, probably three hundred places that I still need to go to in the state of Minnesota. But if like, I don't know if anyone from the Minnesota tourism bureau is listening to this. I assume they are, if they are call me up because uh, I'm here to help. And uh, no, yeah, I'm a big advocate for uh, Minnesota. I think I've lived here. Well, all four of us have lived here at some point. Um, But maybe I've lived here the longest out of the four of us. I don't know. It'll be, uh over so i have lived here like 10 or 11 years this year okay i spent five years in minnesota i also spent five years in minnesota this is my third trip to minnesota so i i i think actually i'm i know it's more than five because i've been here for uh almost five years and then i had a two and a half year stint and a one year stint so um apparently minnesota just keeps pulling me back in (laughs) Nick, I just want to thank you because if there is a Minnesota Tourism Bureau, they're now all listeners. So yeah, yeah, for, absolutely. Yep, you're welcome. That major for that. plug. So, just great. being an influencer. 
<laughs> True to your generation. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what's your church like? What's word of life like? How would you describe that in an elevator to uh, to somebody? Uh, we're we're people who um, love Jesus and love people, and we really just love the opportunity to um, to point people to Jesus and walk alongside with them uh, in their spiritual journey as, and, and point them to Jesus every step of the way. Um, people are getting saved. I, I mean, I think that's a huge part about um, the ministry of Word of Life Church is that people get to know Jesus uh, from all different walks of life. Uh, there's there's not a lot of racial uh, diversity, but the diversity that we have is um, there's socioeconomic diversity and just lifestyle diversity as well as uh, you know social political you know d- diversity. Um, and and in the midst of all of that, p- people are getting to know Jesus. Some some people are getting to know Jesus for the very first time. Other people are getting to know Jesus in a whole new way, and um, and, and still others are, are are growing in Christ, and, um, and as they hear what 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 Christ has done for them and how how God is working through them. Awesome. You, you know, one of the things that uh, Jay had mentioned that my family and I we've actually um, been attending Word of Life. This will be three years this summer, and one of the things that attracted us to Word of Life is a, like any comparison, I think there's like, there's two kinds of churches. When you walk in, either you see the, the, you see smiling faces ready to greet you and embrace you and bring you in, or you see backsides that are maybe talking to other people, but they're not looking at who's coming in through the front door. And one of the things that completely attracted us toward a life is that we see we saw a lot more smiling faces ready to embrace our family and all of the quirks that came with it so much so for us is that when we first moved here we were commuting over an hour on a sunday morning one way um so that we could go and worship at word of life we thought it was that special yeah wow that's awesome to hear we want to we want to hear uh, the story about your church's digital ministry today uh this is something that a lot of churches have had to develop. Uh, some were doing this pretty well before the pandemic, but a lot of churches have had to develop this within the past year. And I'd love for you guys to paint a picture of what your digital ministry is like. We're, we're also learning and seeing that a lot of what we're doing during the pandemic is going to be here to stay for some very positive reasons. And so we just love, first of all, you just kind of paint a broad picture of what your, what your digital ministry strategy is. Well, our, our digital ministry strategy is really a, a multi-campus strategy, and and so we we look at um, we look at our online ministry as one of the campuses uh, of Word of Life Church. We've got our um, our on-site campus, we've got our online campus, and and we really embrace that uh, that aspect of our ministry. Uh, we so we started with um, with with our online campus. Uh, early on in the whole, you know, pandemic thing. Matter of fact, before Nick was even on, on staff, um, I'm actually excited that Nick started while all of our ministry was online. And so there wasn't like, uh, you know, so some of the, the welcoming, uh, you know, kind of stuff. We weren't able to serve cake. Sorry, Nick. We didn't serve cake when you started, uh, you know, or have some big coffee hour or anything like that because everything was online. And yet at the same time, just because we were all online didn't mean that we weren't in a position to hire Nick. Wasn't mean, didn't mean that we weren't in a position to make a transition because Eric Smith, you know, uh, was, was working with us at the time. And he really helped, you know, get us off the, uh, you know, a lot of the ministries, online ministry off the ground in a big way. And we had a lot of people who just plugged in, or I shouldn't say a lot of people. We had a strong handful of, of people who spent a lot of hours getting things off the ground. We had, you know, um, our video sermons and stuff like that on online prior to the pandemic. But what we what we saw uh, in the midst of the pandemic was, you know, a real need to increase our online presence. Yeah, I think for us, it's been an accessibility thing like any other congregation has been wrestling with. Um, but I, I think that there's a perspective change that can happen with that too. So we, we've certainly talked with folks in the area who are like, you know, we're just, we're just doing this until we can meet back in person and then right. that's it. And for us, you know, I, I think every pastor has kind of had to like look in the mirror and say like, you know, there are folks that left because of quarantine. Are those folks coming back? For us, we saw 
um, the birth of our online campus as this, like, as a big bridge to be able to meet people wherever they're at um, and wherever they're at in their journey with Christ. Maybe Sunday morning just isn't the thing for them. It, the, the next option is now not nothing is that they can be a part of our online campus, engage that way, and then hopefully through the preaching, the law, and the gospel, preaching the word, um, that they will be spurned to greater involvement, um, preferably in a physical campus at some point. And, and it's already happening. I mean, just, just this past Sunday, you know, we, we had a, a family, and, um, and they've been worshiping with us at our online campus since December. And wow. just this past Sunday, um, they were wishing with us, you know, on site on our Lasur campus. And so, you know, we see that th these things are happening. And then there's some, then there's the crossover. I've got friends in my neighborhood who worship with us, you know, all the time online on our online campus, um, but also send uh, send their kids to um, to our on-site campus at, in Lasur, you know, for uh, for Wednesdays that we're live with you know, with our youth ministry and stuff like that. And so there really is like this crossover of it's not exclusive that, but they're mutually beneficial uh, as we as we minister within both campuses. Yeah, it's kind of like a uh, like here in Rhode Island, they're doing hybrid learning, where they're doing both in person and digital, and so it's good that you guys can play off so that it's not one or the other, but it's a both and situation where they're both kind of self-serving each other and however people fit in, you know, that's one, that's been one of the biggest things for our church is uh, noticing that there are people who love having access to worship when it is convenient for them. So it's like, you know, we don't have to make sure that our entire family is up and ready to go to make it to church by 10 o'clock, which is when we worship, we can go and and do what needs to get done and get everybody processed together. And then maybe in the afternoon, sit down and watch church together. And so I think that the that digital has really, really helped um, if you embraced it appropriately. Um, helped further the kingdom of God. And so that's kind of my next question towards you guys is uh, tell us about your online campus. I love how you guys are really making it apparent that it's not, that they're not, that they're different, not that they're separate, but that they are different. It sounds like you have an online existence that you're using almost as you guys have referenced it being like a secondary campus. And I think that that's so Cool. So, so tell us a little bit more about that, that online campus, that online entity of, of word of life. Yeah, I can speak to that. So the, I think um, where we're at today, um, there are kind of three, um, three focuses in our online campus with ideas and plans and vision to grow it from, from there right now. But for us right now, it is um, live streaming our Sunday morning gathering. <clears throat> so for us, we have two, we have a nine o'clock and a 10 o'clock. We live stream the 10 o'clock. Um, as many people do, right? You live stream, but that video is available later. So we've seen through our metrics that we get like half of our people engaged on a Sunday morning. Right. But then like we see people are watching it on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, and maybe they're on the treadmill or maybe it's the commute to work or maybe it's when they get a moment, um, when they have carved it into their schedule. And so we have upped our game in that through um, better camera equipment, better audio equipment, um, just, and then also just engagement with them too. So it's not like you're just a fly on the wall, but you on in our live stream, you are a part of our yeah. worship gathering in, in the same way that someone who is sitting, um, you know, 20 feet away from me is. Um, secondly, um, we are offering... Uh, currently, we're offering a Bible study. Um, one of our members is leading a, a Bible study that is completely and um, like for the online campus or, or yeah. under the umbrella of the online campus as a Zoom Bible study. And we're seeing people engaged with that that aren't engaged necessarily at our physical Lasur campus right now. So we're seeing the gospel reach a couple more people that it just we didn't have access to over the last year. And then the third thing, um, which 
brought us here today is through audio. So we are not only putting our sermon audio um, onto you know all the major platforms every week, um, and want to shout out to uh, Scott Sconez for getting us up and running on that. But then um, we thought, well, what's one more way that we can engage in that? And it was through Advent. So our the first season of our podcast um, was uh, how can we tell the stories of people at Word of Life that if you've been here for a year and a half, which was one of our guests, or if you've been here for like 20 years, um, we know that there are people that are connected to Word of Life who haven't heard your story yet. And so we got a lot of positive feedback on telling the stories of Word of Life to word of life. And, and, and in the process, people are still getting saved, you know, so people were getting saved, uh, you know, through, uh, through our online ministry in, in the online campus and, and people are, are, are people, I've got friends who their primary connection to our church is through the podcast. And so that's, that's how they're connecting and, and um, that's how they're engaging and that's how they hear all of the announcements. That's how they hear what's happening in the, in the life of the church, but, but it's also how they are um, hearing the gospel is, is all through, all through the podcast. And then, I mean, and, and it's happening, you know, throughout, uh, throughout the week, it's not just a Sunday thing. Uh, but like, like Nick said that over half of our, over half of our listeners are listening um, at another time, not Sunday morning. That's amazing. Yeah. And that, that podcast, by the way, is the Word of Life podcast. You can search for that Apple podcast, wherever you get your podcast, the Word of Life podcast by Word of Life Church. And uh, it looks like you guys have, um, you know, you, you're, uh, how, how long has it been running? You've got over 70 episodes out. You're telling stories, interviewing people, but also broadcasting your sermons on there, right? Yeah, so there's kind of two arms of it. So um, on the same feed is our sermon audio. So for us, that would be all of our sermon audio for um, uh, bringing us back to Jan 1 of 2020. Yeah. Um, and so you can go back through the archives and, and hear the greatest hits of Jason Lang. And uh, nice. <laughs> all right. <laughs> and then. Um, and then different drops throughout the year. So if you want to use the kind of idea of, of different seasons um, is, uh, is these kind of special uh, interview times. So we did one for Advent. Um, we're spooling one up um, uh, here in the spring. And then uh, we'll do another one here uh, end of the summer. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And those just drop, drop seasonally and, uh, and, you know, and, and keep the connection points, you know, happening as we get to tell people's stories. That's awesome. That's awesome. I think, I think that's something that has come from our show too, that we weren't necessarily expecting or planning, you know, our purpose of our show is about equipping people for ministry leadership and community mission engagement and multiplying disciples. But it's also had this really, we've been hearing stories about people feeling bonded closer together. Yeah. Even while we're, you know, by government mandates, not together, it's, it's drawn people together in an amazing way. Uh, I, I love just hearing stories about, you know, so many ministries struggle during this time. It's so much fun. Though, that's not you what you know. love hearing stories about, though. No, that's not. No. Okay, good. Just make it sure. in the middle of. Uh, yeah, let me. St- uh, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I, love about I don't like those stories. You got the wrong guests on if you want those. <laughs> With so many ministries struggling during COVID. It's, it's so powerful and encouraging to hear stories from churches that are thriving, growing, they've adapted to what's going on, and they found new opportunities for ministry. And that's you guys. It's just so cool to hear. Can you tell us a little bit more about the blessings, the results that you've seen from your online campus, from your podcast, from your digital ministry? What's, what's God doing as a result of that? Well, I think one of the things that comes to mind for me real quick is that, um, you know, of all of the projects that Jay and I are involved in, and one of them being this multi-campus approach to ministry in in a number of different ways, um, is that it never, it never, um, it never fails to impress on us 
that we're not a, like, we're not a big church. And, and so like, if there was a way that we can inspire other folks that are listening to this, to consider ministry in their own churches, to, to seek ways that God can work through them in digital ministry is like, we're not, um, th- this isn't like, I, I don't, I'm not like firing shots here. We're not Bethel. We're not triumph. We're not, um, we're not some of these big churches in the cities. Um, but, um, through a little bit of, uh, a little bit of effort and a whole lot of blessing in this is that, um, God has used, um, these kind of meager ways to continue to share his, um, his gospel with people that need to hear it. So Nick, as, as you're talking about that, um, if I can ask a follow-up question to that, um, there are certain people who find uh, doing stuff digitally completely overwhelming. Are there any ways that you can encourage um, people to just kind of take mini steps? Like, like if there were a few things, a few pointers that you could give to people of ways of maybe dipping your toe in that could maybe produce something that would uh, move the gospel forward. Would you have anything that you could share? Yeah, I think the first thing that I honestly, and maybe Jay would have a different answer to this. The thing that I would encourage um, any congregation to look at is to put in your sermon audio online. Yes, every church has some right like have, have any of us been in a church that doesn't have a soundboard if you've got a soundboard you have a platform to record what you're saying um and the step from recording that to producing that has gotten so much simpler um so like for us um we use free software um to be able to do that um i th- I'm, I think I can name drop because I think it's probably what a lot of people use. Maybe it's what you guys use, but we use Anchor um, as our plat, uh, podcast platform. Um, that's free um, cool. and and is super. So there are really, really easy tools out there. I am not uh, tech savvy as far as audio um, engineering goes. I've never taken any classes or anything like that. But I think, yeah, if I was going to recommend anyone to do one thing, it would be put your sermon audio on the internet because one, people who are looking for churches to be a part of, when they're doing Google searches on things like that, I think they're looking for a couple of things. They're looking for a website and they're looking for what does, you know, um, what does this pastor sound like? What does he preach? Okay. Um, and that's a really easy way to do it. So that'd be my recommendation. Put your sermon audio on the internet. I, nice. I I'd, part, I'd love to hear it. Jay. I just want to really quick piggyback off of Nick really quick uh, to just kind of encourage people that, yeah, that's awesome to put your audio on. Uh, one of the easiest ways for us to do it is um, most of the time you're going to have one person in your congregation who has an iPhone, even yeah. if they don't know exactly how to use it. You're going to have at least one person in your, your congregation that has an iPhone. You can literally take that iPhone put it up on the pulpit, record a voice memo of your sermon and upload it to SoundCloud. That's another free interface. And, and if you have a Facebook page, you can use SoundCloud. It's exactly the same. So I just wanted to encourage somebody with that too, as well. Jay, I'd love your uh, perspective on it too. I I have a principle and that is uh, I will really want to be a lifelong learner. And so I would encourage somebody take a class. Uh, You know, one of the things that we did uh, really early on in this whole, you know, pandemic process and and adding our online campus is we took a class, you know, I found an online class and I just added my whole staff to it. And we just, we just kind of went through it and, you know, we did it on our own because, you know, and then collaborated, you know, our information together. Just don't be afraid to take, you know, take a class and and learn about this stuff because the, the truth is idea what we're doing we have no idea what we're doing that doesn't mean we can't learn and uh and so part of part of the process of being a lifelong learner is just being willing to you know just kind of get out there take a class and then find that find that one thing to you know really apply like you know just putting that sermon audio out there yeah that's tremendous 
Yeah, I resonate with that, Jay. And I appreciate you hearing, hearing you say that, you know, fellow Gen X or to Gen X, or I'm kind of in that same boat. Like if you told me a year ago, I would know how to edit um, a video or a audio podcast. I would have laughed at you. <laughs> like when, when the pandemic hit, I realized there, there were some, you know, projects in my strategic planning thoughts that I thought would be years away that I suddenly realized, okay, no, now's the time. Now's the time to run webinars, to get a podcast going, training videos. So I went and I asked a few friends who did that kind of stuff to teach me a few things. And then I watched YouTube videos to figure out the rest. And now, thankfully, um, Lindsay Natal has taken on our, our editing. So that's, so if you notice an improvement in the audio quality, <laughs> that's because I'm not doing it anymore, <laughs> but it really helped to know what's involved bef- to, in order to, you know, to delegate and empower someone to do that. Even if that's your long-term plan, it doesn't hurt to figure it out. Cause if you don't understand what you're asking someone to do, it's hard to really appreciate right. all that you're asking and the amount of work that's involved. And it's kind of like anything, right? Is like, there's probably, you know, like I said, there's probably an iPhone. There's probably someone in your church that knows how to do this in, in different ways. Maybe they, they do their own podcasts or I know like we've got guys in our church here who do the whole like Twitch video game streaming thing. It's not like a huge leap from what they're doing to what you would, you'd want to do. So yeah, you don't have to go, uh, you don't have to spend a ton of money on it. Um, you probably have um, more equipment than you are than you're aware of. Um, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's great. As we've heard uh, from you guys about all of the different adaptations that you've made and the different, you know, uh, evolution of how uh, digitally you guys have become more of a platform uh, in order to get the gospel out to different people in different areas. Uh, What are some things that um, you guys are going to use moving into the future? So like as these changes have been made, what are the things that you think are going to stay in order to help further your ministry into the future? Yeah, I can, I can speak to, um, I can speak to one aspect of that. So if, if the, if the last question was like the 101, how do you get started now for us a year into this, what are uh, maybe a little more advanced things that we're thinking through? So for us, um, one of the big projects of 2021 is going to be um, not directing traffic to Facebook for our live stream services but directing that traffic to our church website because if we can direct people to our church website for that content um the likelihood of them engaging in other aspects of our online campus or one of our physical campuses um just enhances that much more um we see we see metrics in other places that you'll see increased online giving by directing folks to the church website versus YouTube or Facebook or um, Vimeo or whatever. Um, So that's one of the more advanced things. Um, So for us, like the investment in, in this is honestly only for for us is increasing We're we are leaning way heavier into it than away from it. It ain't going anywhere for us. Right. And there's adding to that ministry to, you know, to, to minister to people it, with things like uh, we've added uh, an online campus pa- um, or uh, online campus elder. And I would love in the future to have to be hiring an online campus pastor. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're, we're also, we're also prepping and planning um, uh, adding another physical campus as well. And so th- there's a, there's an opportunity in a, in a town um, actually it's where Nick lives uh, in, and we're, we're looking at the possibility of adding uh, another physical campus, which isn't going to take away. From, actually the online campus is, is, is there as, as another resource. And so as we are, as Nick was saying, adding, um, and, you know, adding some, some stuff to our online campus and, and bringing people from Facebook and YouTube back onto our website. We're also looking to add, you know, we've already got an online Bible study. We we're, we're looking at uh, launching 
<laughs> and so as we're as we're redirecting people from Facebook and YouTube to to our uh, to our website, we're also looking for opportunities to uh, to pro- provide more physical campuses as well. Yeah, because you know, you hold on, time out. You know, you said that so discreetly and I didn't want to cut you off, but is that like common knowledge or are you guys spoiling that on our podcast? The, the extra new campus. <laughs> oh no, that's, that's not a spoiler. We literally had a meeting on Sunday uh, that we, uh, well, at least our congregation knows that, uh, that we are, are launching and uh, preparation and planning for uh, Word of Life New Prague um, right now and, and, and seeing where that's, where that's gonna lead us. And so we really are uh, taking a look at a multi-campus approach as we look at Word of Life Lesseur, uh, Word of Life Online and, uh, and launching Word of Life New Prague as well. Amazing. Yeah. But so if funny. I could speak to that, because, because we put in the work um, of doing the online campus, it makes, it growing for us, growing the borders of our reach um, became way more attainable because of doing this online campus work ahead of time. So it just, it, it, it's so multifaceted in the way that it benefits your congregation. Um, it, it's totally worth it. Man, how look- cool is that too, to, to see, you know, you invested heavily in one thing and now it's paying off into a new opportunity. And the Lord is just constantly opening up doors to walk through as these things are occurring, even in the midst of COVID, even in the midst of trying to navigate something that none of us looking back 10 years would have ever said, oh, we're going to be in the middle of a pan- a global pandemic. And now look, at how God is like, sit back and watch what I can do through this. Yep. It's amazing. Yep. yep. You know, as you guys have been sharing too, I'm just so excited and encouraged by this. And as you've been yeah. sharing, there's a couple of other principles that um, that I've heard you, you know, speak to regarding, especially digital ministry. Um, one is like, you, you started with what you could, but you also developed. You didn't wait till everything mm-hmm. was perfect to start. And Mike and I can relate to that too. Like you just, you worked with what you had and you, but you didn't leave it like that. You kept improving it, developing it. The, um, <clears throat> excuse me. The other thing I, I hear you guys talking about is like, uh, you know, some, sometimes people think, okay, when the pandemic's over, we can stop doing all this stuff that we were doing during the pandemic. And it sounds mm-hmm. like, you know, pretty much everything you're doing is, is here to stay. And it's, it's not going away. You're not going to shut it down. It's part of the, the growth of your, your ministry. And I just, I, I, I don't think we can emphasize how important that is to think that way. You guys have any, any other thoughts or comments along those lines? You know, I increased our budget for yeah. our online campus. Wow. Not, yeah. We're not looking to decrease it. Yeah. We've increased our budget yeah. and we've got big plans and, uh, and we're, and we're just starting to, you know, launch new aspects of our online ministry. You know, I saw something online uh, last week, um, a restaurant out of LA that was uh, kind of given a seminar on how to future proof their business model. Now we're, we're, we're Christians here. And so future proofing things doesn't necessarily fit into our, into our theology. It's all in God's hands. Insane. All of that is this is if you look at how restaurants have pivoted to not only in-house, but how how the world of takeout and delivery and all of these things have are, are probably are not going to go anywhere. Um, they're only going to enhance what the um, restaurant industry is going to do moving forward in a similar vein. Online ministry for us only enhances everything that we do here at Word of Life. Um, so it was um, kind of maybe a scary step or an unsure step right at the beginning but yeah yeah, after a year of this um we wouldn't want it any other way that's right that's awesome we'd love to put our guests on the spot too but we'd love to have you guys back to we'd love to have you back sometime soon to hear more about your online campus Mm -hmm. as it grows and also your new parade campus too so 100 percent. we'd love to ask people when you it's hard to say no 
<laughs> hey, we love this stuff. So, we, and honestly, I think part of part of our ministry here and what we're doing with our online campus, as well as you know, um, at the New Prairie campus, is uh, we really do want to be an encouragement to churches in the Lutheran Brethren, especially, and, and and other churches as well, where we we're not a huge church. Right. And yet, um, yet we have the opportunity to do some, some huge stuff. And, um, and is it going to take some, some learning and some growing? Absolutely. And yet at the same time, honestly, if Word of Life can do this, you can do this. Um, so, you know, like we said at the beginning of this is that this is a real kind of collaboration uh, between the COB Forge podcast and the Word of Life podcast. You know, we were trying to figure out what what this mashup looks like and it just makes me think of what was the old ad for reese's uh peanut butter cups is peanut butter and chocolate two great tastes that taste great together i think that's what we've got <laughs> yeah, going here yeah, that's good nice uh, that's awesome so i don't nice. know who's peanut butter who's chocolate but uh uh that's uh you know whatever anyway so one of the questions that we have though for you guys is I don't know if you all know, we started the Word of Life podcast. One of our inspirations was seeing the work that you guys were doing on the Forge. Um, and we wanted to hear a little bit of the backstory of where was the Forge forged out of and what kind of impact you guys are seeing uh, it have um, today. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I think like i think the the probably the, it probably goes back uh you know seven eight years ago i i started to study when i was doing my my doctoral work i started to really study what's what's happening with the church in north america the, the struggles it faced why so many churches were dying and declining and the short answer is um i can spare you from reading my 300 page most boring book ever written when churches lose sight of god's mission and they become inwardly focused. They lose sight of the, the mission field that God's placed them in. And that just really became captivated and energized by understanding the importance of, of returning to our mission. And that means in a huge way, planting new churches, which is my, my job working for North American Mission. We oversee our, our church planning efforts, uh, church multiplication, helping churches add campuses like what you guys are doing. Um, and then also helping churches re-engage re with their mission to bring more vitality to established churches. The established church is huge. It's a powerful ministry. Established churches were better positioned to weather the, the pandemic than church plants. And there's just a huge opportunity to engage in, in God's mission. So, I, so I've been thinking about those, this kind of stuff for seven, eight years. I've always loved podcasts um, since I, you know, like since they became a thing. And uh, it's coming kind of back in my mind. I've thought like, wow, there's a lot of potential here. So, you know, there's so many things that we do in life as we commute, do chores, um, things that, you know, we already can put in some earbuds and listen to a, a show and learn something as we're doing that. So I, I, I've known there's a lot of potential around it. Um, about a year and a half ago, I started working for the CLB for North American mission. I was a parish pastor up until then. And uh you know, so we used, we used some digital ministry. Like we, we had an audio podcast for sermons. That's about it. Um, then I started working for North American mission six months into that, the pandemic hit. And so, um, you know, I, I took, took the lead on our COVID response stuff and, you know, my kind of, I had some long-term dreams for some things that we would do down the road, including a podcast. And I realized, okay, there's so many things we can no longer do right now. This is the time to get going on this. And I had a friend who had a, a show and uh, who had started up a podcast. His name was Phil Havens. And he had, a, he had a podcast called Bow Hunting Freedom. And it was about helping people find careers in the bow hunting industry. So I got to watch him start this thing up from scratch, produce a hundred episodes. And he just had a great run. It was an amazing thing to watch. Uh, so when we were thinking about doing this, I, I went back to him and got some advice from him. We have some people in the LB that have done podcasts. I picked their brains. And so I learned like 
I had these long, actually these long like checklists I made for myself to learn how to do this step by step. Um, you know, learning how to produce episodes, things like that. And early on, I talked to Mike to see if he would be a good co-host or to see if he would be a co-host. I know he'd be a good one. And Mike, um, what'd you say? The, uh, that'd be sweet. Is that what I said? I don't know. <laughs> I, I just thought so, that'd be sweet. So, I realize this is getting really long and boring. Uh, but here's the good part. So wow. I thought, I knew some of the shows I listened to had, had a co-host and it would be so boring if it was just me. <laughs> and so I asked Mike, would you do this with me? We're, we're, we've, we're ministry friends. We've been, come, our friendship has been growing more and more the longer we're, we serve uh, about two hours away from each other. Mike said, yes. And so let me just give you a story about how, what a big deal this is. So when we were getting ready to do this, um, I was telling a fellow pastor out in the East Coast here, like, hey, yeah, I'm uh, getting a getting a podcast going, and and he's kind of like, oh yeah, like kind of politely interested, like, oh yeah, good for you, that's so nice. And I said, yeah, and Mike Natal's gonna be my co-host. His eyes widened. He said, oh really? Immediately grabbed, pulled out his phone, and said, what's what's it called? <laughs> <laughs> so Mike is why people listen. Uh, well, then, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> okay, I'll go that far though. All right, all right. And then last thing, Lindsay's I'll say is, probably going to edit that out because she knows <laughs> better than to leave that in. So <laughs> she nice. doesn't want any of that so, on record. Yeah, it's, <laughs> the the name comes from you know. So we had a plan. We knew the purpose, the plan. We we worked out a schedule, and the last thing we had to figure out was the name. And so our name comes from a another project that's rolling out. Um that is, is going to be rolling out this coming summer from North American mission. And, uh, it's a, it's a resource website, a resource sharing website called the CLB forge. And so the, our podcast is going to have a home on that site. So that's cool. You know, yeah. This, so we rolled this out about a year before that, but that's coming. And, uh, and the idea is that it's, it's a place for equipping. You know, like a forge is where you create tools and, and we want to do that for churches. And uh, I think, um, yeah, and I think we've been seeing that happen, but Mike, I think you should share about like the impact that you're, you're seeing the show having. Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of interesting to be on this side of things, like to be asked, I'm used to asking the questions and then just <laughs> engaging with the people. So answering is a little different. It's, it's very different. Um, I would say from, from our standpoint, it's just been great to hear the encouragement from people, but not just like people who I would assume would listen to, but to like randomly hear from people where I'd be like, you're, you're actually listening to this. Like that, that was probably the most amazing thing uh, for me. And I think that it, it, changes and the more so the the cool part is and i love hearing this about you guys at word of life is like the podcast is multifaceted in terms of like there's different topics that get covered and depending upon the topic is like a hook for people and i can remember that as I started getting into like watching YouTube videos or watching, um, you know, like uh, different podcasts and stuff, and they would go along with like my passions. And if you could hook me on one, chances are I'm going to go backwards and now retroactively listen to all the stuff that I missed. And so like for us, I feel like that's a huge turning point for, for us is that we've had such an eclectic group of guests and of topics that it's reached out to so many more people that I didn't even expect it to. And I'm sure you guys are doing that too. Like I love one of the things that I started that I think I'm going to start adapting into our church um, is the idea of doing like little recordings of people in our church, just allowing them to tell their stories and putting that up on our church website or on Facebook and seeing where that goes. Because I want to share this video with someone else. And, and that is the hook to then have them go backwards and listen. So like one of the ones that I never would have thought would, 
would have listened was like uh, Brad Hoganson's daughter reached out to us when we did the PK episode. And I was like, whoa, wait, what? Like you're listening, you're listening to this. And so, and it's great. Or like even one of the most recent episodes that we did was Ben Hosh. And Ben Hosh was the associate pastor at Stavunger when he was out pastoring. And Stavunger then shared the podcast. And now we have new listeners to the podcast because of Stavunger. And so like each opportunity that we have to do different aspects of ministry brings in new people who then go backwards and and listen. And I'm sure you guys are, are noticing that too. So that's been like a really interesting avenue. And just to hear from people, like when we get together with them um, or when we reach out to people to do like, Hey, we're thinking maybe you'd be a good guest. And they're like, Oh, I've been waiting for you to like ask me. And I'm so excited to be on it. (laughs) And, and I'm like, Oh, this is, this is great to kind of hear people's excitement about it. Like, because it's, especially during COVID, this is the connection that people are craving. And we missed out on convention last year and we missed out on, you know, the togetherness that the church really feels during those, uh, during that week together. And I feel like not completely, but at least partially, the podcast has kind of filled in that gap that people were craving over that amount of time in COVID. And I, and I was really appreciative to hear that from so many people. So I think that's the difference that it's making and what really spurs me on. Um, and I just love working with Ryan too. He, as you can tell, like Ryan held up a whole bunch of pieces of paper of all the work that he put in. And I get to just bask in Ryan's detail and it's a huge (laughs) blessing for me. So like Ryan talks about how he gets to use my name and people get excited to listen to the podcast. Well, like the only reason why we even have a podcast is because of Ryan. So like, good, I can record and I have a decent voice and, and I have a good sense of humor, but if it wasn't for Ryan, nobody would hear that. And if it wasn't for Ryan, there'd be no details of, he knows like today we were talking about this. Well, when's this, uh, when's this episode going to drop? I don't know the answer to that question, <laughs> but, but Ryan knew and he could, he could get it for us in seconds. Yeah. And then I was able to make a joke of it in the beginning of the podcast, which Ryan does a great job of using his resources to make other people look good. And that's exactly what the forge is all about using the resources in order to make other people equipped to do ministry, not to glorify Ryan but to glorify the Lord. And that's what it's all about. That's what the forge is all about. Use and it's our been tools. effective. It's been effective. I mean, that's what hooked me on the forge, honestly. Like, I don't know which podcast was my first one, but I, I was, I was driving, uh, put on, put on the forge and, and I was listening to you, to you, uh, you were talking to some guests and then it went straight into the church on track. And, and I, I, the first one was derailer number two and I derailer number two, then caused me to like, oh, like, okay, I, I need to go back to driller number one. And so now I just kind of keep on with the, with the church. I, I'll, I'll confess, I don't listen to every single guest, but I listen to all of those church on track ones. And so, yeah. because that's the kind of tools that we need in the, in, in the church. And so the forge is forging tools. Mm-hmm. That's awesome to hear. I know. Yep. And I, I do honestly think that's that what my primary ministry passion is helping other people succeed in their, in the, in the calling God's place in their lives. Like, I just love doing that. So that's so cool to hear, hear you guys share that. I think one of my favorite stories too, is like um, Ben Hosh, one of our recent guests, when his episode aired, he shared it with like his Facebook support group. And he said, this, the show has helped him. He, and he's a missionary in Taiwan, the other side of the planet. It's helped him stay connected to his church family. And I get not, that. Oh, I get that because we have a church member who lives in Bangkok and he's a part of our, our online campus. Wild, wild. Yeah. And so you're, we, uh, <laughs> Nick's got family in Minot. 
Nick's got family in Minot and they're a part of our uh, online campus. I've got friends in Jersey. They're a part of our online campus. And I think that what these things, these tools do, and once they're, you know, kind of like sent out there by friends is they also end up connecting people, um, you know, to the, the tools and, and well as, as well as connecting them to the gospel that they need to hear. Uh, hey, podcast listeners, we're going to take a quick break from this uh, episode um, on a more serious conversation with uh, Mike and Ryan from the Forge podcast. But because it's a Word of Life podcast, it's another uh, it's another installation, another exhibition, um, another segment of our show and tell. And Jay, you're going to be the first one. What did you bring to show and tell this week? I brought for show and tell my uh, my buddy Nick Sinclair, who is my tattoo artist. He's in Zambroda, Minnesota, which is just north of Rochester. I did recently get uh, get a couple of new tattoos, but he also you don't have to get tattoos to to be supported by Nick Sinclair. He also does stickers, and let me tell you a little something about Nick, and it's super super cool. Nick loves Jesus. Their ministry through their tattoo shop is they host a Saturday morning Bible study that's open to everyone. And on their website, they have uh, they have testimonies of people who have uh, been impacted by the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he's sharing that honestly and openly on his on his website. He's sharing it in his tattoo shop. And front and center when you come in is a big, giant, audacious Jesus with a bloody cross because he loves to tell people about what Jesus has done for them. And so a uh, big shout out to my buddy, uh, Nick Sinclair. And uh, if you're looking for a, a, a tattoo or some, uh, some really killer stickers, um, he's got this John 316 one right here. Um, then uh, we'll, we'll add a link in our bio. Very good. And because this is a collaboration podcast, we uh, we would be remiss if we didn't invite Mike and Ryan to show and tell. So, Mike, yeah, what did you bring to show and tell this week? And show and tell. I wish I actually could bring both of them, but they are so large that I was unable to. So for Christmas and for my birthday, I got two really cool gifts. So I've been trying to intentionally get things in that I can use in order to minister to other people. And so for Christmas, my family teamed up and they got me an uni pizza oven and it oh, rocks, yeah. dude. <laughs> and so what's so cool about this pizza oven is that it's not only portable, but it makes really, really, really good pizza. And so like, <laughs> what's really cool is making pizza with others and having the opportunity to talk while you're making pizza and get to know people while you're doing it and cooking it for them and then watching them enjoy what they just put together themselves and then relating it to our relationship with Christ in the way that he creates us. And then not only does he create us, but he gets to enjoy us in the same way that we get to enjoy what we put together as well uh, on our pizza. Then for my birthday, my family, once again, because they did such a great job pooling their resources, they pulled their resources to get me a DeWalt miter saw. It's the most insane thing ever. And so what's really cool about that is now that gives me another opportunity to have people over to do different aspects of life, build for someone, produce for someone, and just sit around and create out of the resources that God has given to us and have the opportunity to talk to people about it. And then even to like gift things that we've made. And so those are my two show and tell uni pizza oven and a DeWalt miter saw a little bit pricey, but like I said, if you have a family who could pool in all together, totally reasonable and attainable. Love it. Love it. Very good. All right, Ryan, you're up. What'd you bring to show and tell us? All right. Well, I got, I got two things for you and uh, you can use them both or cut one, whatever you want to do. So first one is uh, it's actually a book on my nightstand right now. It's called the common rule habits of purpose for an age of distraction by Justin early. And it's been really good for me. It's a book about uh, the, the common rules. It's kind of ancient spiritual practice, 
but the word doesn't come from like rules, laws to follow. It's, it's referring to a Latin word that actually means like a trellis, like you would grow things on your garden. And it's something I've been reading that's been helping me establish uh, new spiritual rhythms in my life that just aid my walk as a discipleship with Jesus. So in an age of digital distraction, in an age of pandemic distraction, it's been, been just what I needed. And I, and I think when the pandemic hit, I just, you know, found myself working more and more and more and uh, found it easier and easier to be distracted from my walk with the Lord. So that book has mm. been really good for me. And I'm toying with the idea of like pulling a group of guys together to go through it. The other one that's maybe less serious is my mountaineering axe. Hey, oh, in my office. Wow, that's awesome. And my, yes, my, my black diamond <laughs> mountaineering axe. I had it on a trip last week and um, uh, last Saturday and I'm uh, taking it out again next week. So I just, I love hiking in the mountains and it's uh, fun to hike in the winter. And just, you know, having a reason to walk around with something like this is just, <laughs> just feels great. Have you traversed uh, an icy mountainside cool. using that? Yeah, yeah, yep. Solid. Dude. It feels pretty cool. It's useless ninety nine point nine 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 percent of my life, but on those few trips, it's a lot of fun. So nice. I, I can hear bear grills in my head, just be like, "You're gonna need this to get a to get across a crevasse." Have you yeah. gotten across a crevasse? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah perfect. Yep. Perfect. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if I yeah. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be dropped off. By a helicopter <laughs> with only a mountaineering axe <laughs> and a wolf skin <laughs> and survive for two weeks. And you're gonna have to oh, make your own man. <laughs> Oh man, Lindsay, making it that... afraid CLB Forge edition. Oh, Lindsay, right there. That's the snippet to start the podcast with. That accent that Ryan just did. I don't even know what it was. It was kind of English, kind of it was who it was even a knows? disaster. Is what it was. Nice. There's no, there's That's no real the starter accent. right there. Oh shit! <laughs> well, he is a part of you know cultivate New England, so maybe it's New English. New uh, English. That's oh, true. Yeah. 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 yeah like All right. Um, this is what I'm bringing this week. Um, you know, in December we recommended the Mockingbird uh, devotionals that nice. come out, and so I'm kind of going back to the well on this a little bit, but I got a picture from my office recently. If, uh, and I know this is, um, you have to see the video on this, but if you're only joining us on audio, this is Norman Rockwell's uh, uh, pink, it's a print, but it's uh, lift up thine eyes. If you hadn't seen this picture, the reason why I bring up the mockingbird as we're talking about the kind of impact that digital ministry can have on someone um, the digital ministry of mockingbird has been very impactful on me. And I heard, uh, in one of their podcasts, Dave Zoll preach a sermon that had to do with that picture. And that sermon was so impactful on me that I went online that day, bought the picture for myself so that I could have it as a reminder in my office of kind of similar conversation that Ryan's having about um, uh, the, the kind of life draining that is digital distraction. Lift up thine eyes to the Lord. Um, and so anyway, my, uh, show and tell this week is Mockingbird. You can check out their podcast, their website, books, all that stuff. Jason, Nick, thanks so much for being our guest today. It's just so great to hear about your ministry. Thanks for being our guests. And thank you to our listeners for checking out the show today. Uh, again, you can meet Nick in episode 29 and you can meet Jason in episode 40. Uh, we'd love for you to subscribe and share the show with a friend. Thanks for listening. Hey, See thanks you. for having us guys. Thanks. Thanks a lot. We really appreciate it. This has been an episode of the CLB Forge podcast with Pastor Mike Natal and Dr. Ryan Nilsson. Thanks for listening. We welcome your questions and comments. Email us at podcast at clbforge.org.